Mike Rowe and his mom, Peggy. Now, Peggy, we are going to talk about that extraordinary new book you've got, you know, mm -hmm. Vacuuming in the Nude. We'll get to that, I absolutely promise. But first, I want to talk to your son here, Mike Rowe. Oh, God. Oh, look, <laughs> yeah, you're, right. you're, on, you're on with your mom. Yes, look, this can't. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Oh, easy. Let me explain <laughs> this one. The CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase is Jamie Dimon. Mm -hmm. He believes there's some truth, that's his words, in China's claim that the U.S. is incompetent and lazy. I'll give you a quick quote. They kind of, the Chinese, kind of look at America and say, you've been incompetent and lazy. There's truth to that. We've screwed up infrastructure. We've screwed up inner city schools. <laughs> the bottom line here, Mike, is do you think that Americans are lazy? Well, even if I do, I, I, I don't want to hear it from China. Right. right? Um, no, I think, I think Americans, like the Chinese, are, are human. And I think when you give humans a choice, when you give humans an easy button, they'll hit it. I will, you know. I mean, I think we're all born with this idea that we're like rivers trying to get to the ocean. You know, you get to a mountain and you don't go, oh, I'm going to go over that thing. You, mm -hmm. you, you go around it. You zig and you zag. So, look, when I, I talk a lot about this with my foundation. We offer work ethic scholarships because we believe that the, the fault in our stars is a certain kind of in action. You know, we need to be encouraged to do the hard thing, the difficult thing. We need to be suspicious of the easy thing. Yep. Right? And so, you know, that's, that's life. We, we reported that since March, 400,000 people have walked away from the workforce. There are 400,000 fewer employees now than there were in March of this year. Yeah. What happened? Well, they were given an easy button, in part. Right? I don't want to paint with too broad a brush, but if you're able to support yourself by not working versus working, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to wring your hands over the fact that a lot of people will choose not to work. Work has become the proximate cause of our unhappiness. We've been told anyway that if you're unhappy in your life, it's probably because you're unhappy in your work. And we're told time and time again that job satisfaction is a result of the job, but it's really not. It's, it's, it's a result of the person. Yeah, it's in your head. Of course. Yes. And I can introduce you to a person who wrote every day for 60 years without really anything resembling a book deal. Oh, look, she... Sounds like It's so crazy. Yeah. She just happens to be <laughs> sitting. happens to be sitting it's right so weird, Lauren. I think this is where we introduce Peggy as your mom. Mm. Peggy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Can't he talk? Oh, can he just? That's it, all I got. That voice. <laughs> I know. He's got the best voice at Fox. Uh, Come probably on. Don't make a lot it weird story. Well, it's, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. So but let's talk you. about the book. Uh, <clears throat> vacuuming in the nude and other ways to get attention. Uh, forgive me for asking, but why did you come up with a, uh, a title like that? And how did you come up with it? <laughs> did he suggest it? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a metaphor. For? Because... I have done so many things to get attention through the years, to bring attention to my writing. I've had so man many rejections through really? the years, yes. I wrote two books years ago that never saw the light of day. They're still in a drawer because publishers wouldn't read them. But you Editors were eventually didn't... published when you were 80 years old. That's when you first got published. Well, I had a book published at 80. But during the years, I did write for um, newspapers and magazines. Yeah, but your first book was 80. Y yeah. And vacuuming exactly. in the Nude uh -huh. is, is uh, your third book. It is. Mm -hmm. My first book was called About My Mother, and my second book was About Your Father. And, and this title, uh, it is not erotica. It's not. Despite the title. Sorry, Despite Stuart. the picture on the front. <laughs> what and are you on this program it, for? It's not a <laughs> pop-up either, okay? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's very fun. Look, again, my mom, you have to, to put yourself in my place, you watch her write every day for 60 years. She can't leave the house without a yellow legal pad. She interviews people that she runs into. She writes their stories. They're always funny. They're always warm. And they're never what a publisher wants. Until you live long enough, the world spins around, and the next thing you know, here you are. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I, I, you talk about work ethic. I mean, I, I don't know if you meant to, that kind of segue to happen, but it's kind of brilliant if your producers did, because she's it. Yeah. 
The, exactly. the, the woman works Work and ethic. works, and now she's got yeah. hundreds of thousands of Facebook fans who are hanging on her every word. It's crazy. Hundreds of thousands. Oh, that's good. Now, wait a minute. I've got one more for you. I understand that, Peggy, you just went to the bar for the first time at the age of 84. I've even got tape. Roll that tape, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi ladies, this is my first time at a bar. Okay. Cheers. 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 To Peg's first, first time, time sitting at, at a bar. The bar. I'm a bar virgin. Maybe. I still don't Not believe anymore. her. Not anymore. Do yes. I have to drink? Yes. <laughs> Wait a second, was that the first time you ever sat at any bar? It is. At any... Why did it and take you so long? this is the second time. <laughs> This is the second time. This is not a bar. Well, I've yeah. never really been a drinker. I have nothing against it. In fact, I think my son might tipple a little bit. Oh, thank God. Mom, I've pe heard. People watch the show. I know, I know. But, but didn't you give him advice in the first place to get kind of a real job in television and get him out there into uh, how the world works and dirty jobs and all that? Y you pushed Absolutely. him into that. Well, sort of. She called me when I was working at CBS and said, your grandfather's 90. Wouldn't it be nice uh, if before he died, oh, he that. turned on the TV and saw you doing something that looked like work? Bad advice. I do recall that. Yeah, that, that was good advice. I do recall. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. What was the best advice your mom ever gave to you? The best, I, I don't know that she ever put it in these words, but it, it was along the lines of, look, don't follow your passion, but always bring it with you. Find a way to love whatever it is you wind up doing. Yeah. And you know, that, that to me has informed everything. Just because you love something doesn't mean you can't stink at it. And just because you don't love something doesn't mean you might not be good at it. It took me a while to figure that out, but you know, growing up with people like my mom and dad, where you were encouraged to constantly experiment, that advice makes sense, but it can't compare to actually watching them live it. Thank I'm you. telling you, for 60 years, she paid her dues. And now when people talk about the overnight success, three-time New York Times best-selling author, yeah, it's overnight, 60 years. And 60 you're never years. going to retire, are you? You'll never stop Absolutely writing. Absolutely not. But there are advantages to waiting until you're older to be successful. Like what? Well, like I've never been part of the Me Too movement. <laughs> Sexual harassment has not been part of my life. I mean, not by editors or publishers or interviewers, never, not well, once. congratulations on escaping all of that. Yeah, 30 years ago, though, she would have been quite a, it would have been a very different story. It would indeed. <laughs> uh, Mike Rowe, Peggy Rowe, thanks for joining us. Let me tell you this. We're going to be watching your book special. It's called America's Grandmother, Sunday night on Fox, 10 p.m. Eastern. Mike will be watching your show, how America Works, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on Fox Business. How's that for a promo? A I double can't... promo, just like that. Look at that. It's the only shirt I own. I can't <laughs> believe I'm wearing the same... It's, it's always the same thing. I'll buy a new one. Sorry. Would you?